So we will stand up all together, raise our eyes up to the sky with faith and love in our hearts, and we will embark. Oh, oh, oh. We will give. Hello my fellow Latter-day Saints, Kenzie Redshaw, the Mormon Entertainer here, the most inspirational Mormon in all of Asia, and today it's Two for Tuesdays, part one. And it is the first of two reviews today because I'm going to be reviewing not just a film, yeah, those who know, those who know me from my previous work, from my, my now defunct channel, uh, I did game reviews, but now I'm expanding to film reviews as well. And while I'm on the subject of films, I am also going to be talking about the winners and what my thoughts are on those winners from the BAFTAs at the weekend. This is going to be interesting. So, what film shall I review today? First off, let's get some light on in this situation. Excellent, thank you very much. Now, film. Let's go back to the Stone Age. Let's go back to the Stone Age. And we are going to talk about Early Man. <laughs> yep. An animated film to start off proceedings. I mean, why not? It's a really good film. But how good is it? And is it worthy of getting a seal of approval for me from me? So, anyway, here we go. Let's see. Uh, now, I will be talking about some. I will be talking about key points in the film. So, this would be a very good time to spoiler alert. As I judge these films on story characters, writing, and soundtrack. And as a fifth category in cases like this, the animation. So, let's go. Let's start with the story. Basically, like I said, it's in the Stone Age and you've got the <clears throat> You've got Chief Bobnar, the leader of a tribe who hunts rabbits. A tribe that hunts rabbits. Not exactly very... What's the word I'm looking for? Not exactly very... Ah! There we go. Not exactly very filling as far as trying to feed the whole tribe is concerned, but... It does have an interesting premise because Doug says they want to hunt, he wants to hunt mammoths instead. Until one night when they are about to feast on said rabbit they have hunted today. Uh, that day, even. The Age of Bronze is, according to Lord Nuth, has begun and claims the end of the Stone Age has arrived. And Bobnar's tribe are forced to live in the volcanic badlands outside of the valley that they are in. What happens next is basically they try to get the valley, get their valley home back by challenging 
Lord Nuth's team, Real Bronzio, if that's the right way to pronounce it. I was right. Real Bronzio. That's, I was right. I was right, it was Real Bronzio. <clears throat> they are basically challenged, they are challenged to a game of football where if Doug's team win, they get their home back. But if they lose, they will have to work in the mines that have been set up in the Valley Home. Well, interesting premise. While getting ready for training, Doug tries to get some more balls to do the training with and ends up meeting Guna, which is an interesting development because women aren't allowed to play for the Bronze Age teams. After, after seeing how good Guna is, Doug decides, come with me and help me and help train my team. Then game day comes and basically with the way with the way they set with the way the character with the way uh, blah 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 I can't get my words out. Two thousand years later. So it turns out that the Lord Nuth is actually French. Sacre bleu! And I thought it was going to be England versus Germany, yeah? <sighs> France versus England. I wanted England versus Germany! Because that's basically that's basically what this that's basically what the football game felt like. It felt like England versus Germany. And unsurprisingly, with the film being made in England, there was a lot of references to 1966. Why does that not surprise me? So I've got to dock a couple of points off for that because I mean, for goodness sake, it was 52 years ago. Get over it, England. <sighs> Deary, dearie, dearie me. Times like this, I wonder why I bother with films that constantly reference 66! <sighs> anyway... Anyway, Guna trains... Anyway, Guna trains the team, the team become really good. And then the fight, and then the game... And then the final, the big game comes, and not surprisingly, with it being an animated film, and they want to have a happy ending, boom! Doug's team win, and they get their battery back. End of story, the end. Boom. Right, so where on earth do we begin with how the story goes? Well, it's... It's a story that's been done... It's a story that's been done many, many times before. You get driven away from your home and you need to do something to try and get it back. And if you lose, you have to adhere to the bad guy's regime. I mean, I haven't come across that one before. But the fact it was set in the Stone Age. Or transitioning to the Age of Bronze, according to Lord Nuth.
it's going to be interesting to see how we do this going forward. Because what am I? What am I even saying? What am I even saying? I'm still, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to calm myself down from the fact that they kept referencing 1966, and and I'll get into that when it comes to the writing very soon. Now, the story, get on with it, yes, get on with it, yes! well, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a premise that's been done many, many times before, so hardly surprising, so like I say, that's another couple, it's another point or it's another, it's another uh, few points that I have to dock off as well. But, at the end of the day, it doesn't take away from the fact that it is still a pretty good film. So, for the story, I'm going to have to give that a 7 out of 10. I'm gonna have to give it to a seven, a seven out of 10. Characters now. Well, here's where the points start to go whoop. Now, let's start things off with who's in said cast. Right, we've got Eddie Redmayne to start with. I mean, this is just some of the stuff that he's been in. He's got, he's had supporting roles in Saving Grace, Elizabeth the Golden Age, The Other Berlin Girl. He played, he played Marius in the film version of Les Mis. He portrayed Stephen Hawking in The Theory of Everything, winning an Academy Award, Golden Globe and BAFTA for the role. He played the Danish girl and is now known as Newt Scamander in the Fantastic Beasts film series, spinning off from the Harry Potter series. He plays Doug. Tom Hiddleston is Lord Newth in this film. He's also known mostly as Loki from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Also done War Horse. The Deep Blue Sea, the Deep Blue Sea, not the Deep Blue Sea film that was, that was, um, what was it, 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 what was it? that was, uh, that was with Samuel L. Jackson, which I actually watched last night as well, could have been it, uh, Woody Allen's comedy Midnight in Paris, uh, he was also, he's also been in Crimson Peak, High Rise, and I saw the light. So yeah, pretty wide range of roles, but like I say, he's most well known as Loki in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Maisie Williams next. Who goody. Maisie Williams. All I need to say is Game of Thrones. Need I say more regarding Maisie? Or, or to give her full name, Margaret Constance Williams. But she's known as Maisie Williams, but I think Arya Stark, Arya Stark, by the way, in Game of Thrones. Her first major role, her, her professional acting debut as well, interestingly enough. And what else has she done in the meantime? She's done a couple of episodes. She's done a few. She's done in a couple of episodes of Robot Chicken, and was also in Doctor Who a few years ago. Ah, Timothy Spall. Oh, oh, I mean, three strong names. This one makes it four. Eddie Redmayne, Tom Hiddleston, 
Maisie Williams, and now Timothy Spall. Let's see what he's done. He's done Secrets and Lies, The Last Samurai, Sweeney Todd, The Damned United, The King's Speech, and most well known as Peter Pettigrew in the Harry Potter series. First making an appearance in The Prisoner of Azkaban. And Johnny Vegas. Johnny, 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 Johnny Vegas. Wow. Johnny Vegas. What's he done? He's done 8 out of 10 cats. He's done Shooting Stars. He's done Benadorm. Celebrity Juice. Still open all hours. 8 out of 10 cats does Countdown. The Last Leg. He's been in an episode of Red Dwarf as well. Wow, I'll say he's most, I'll say most British fans will know him best as the lead, um, the, the main guy in uh, Benadol. Now, what has Rob Brydon done? He's also in the film. Uh, Johnny Vegas, by the way, he plays Asbo, a fidgety member of Doug's tribe. Yeah, we'll figure that one out. Um, what has he done? He's known as a, what else has he done? He's done, he's done a Knight's Tale, a brief role in Shaun of the Dead, played the snake in the animated adaptation, adaptation of the Gruffalo. He did the cat on the room on the broom. Um, he was in the Cinderella remake. As Master Phineas, although he's uncredited. But TV. I'm Alan Partridge. Black Books. Robbie the Reindeer. I remember that one. He made a couple of appearances on Top Gear. He made some appearances on QI. Uh, Little Britain as well. A guest presenter on Have I Got News For You. But again, he he was uh, from Series 3. He also presented... He also presented... He also presents uh, Would I Lie To You? Um, and is most well-known... For Barn, uh, uh, how are you? Brian West in Gavin and Stacy. I mean, that's a that is a pretty strong cast. Rob Brydon plays the messenger bird, and also does the commentators as well for the football game. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, So next up, and then I say even Nick Park has a even Nick Park. Yes, the director of the film. Even Nick Park has a, a role in the film. He plays Hognob, the pig, uh, the wild boar, I should say, who is uh, Doug's pet. Now, just from those names I've read out alone, that is a very strong cast, and they managed to bring. The characters to life. Every, I mean, every single one of them, just bringing each of their characters to life, and you're just like, "What? How on earth?" Uh, I'll say Tim Spall played Chief Bobnar as well. Just to get that one out of the way, and whew, that was about that. I mean, I can't really fault the casting. I really cannot fault the casting, but I just I just can't fault the casting. Ten out of ten for the casting and the characters. The writing. 
Ooh, okay, writing. Uh, how do we go about this? Stereotypical British humour, which is hardly surprising for a British film, but it worked. It worked for the film. I did mention in the story segment earlier that they made a few references to 1966, which I had to dock a few points off for. And this was one of the references. They actually, they legitimately said they think it's all over. The whistle blows. It is now. I say like, but it's it's typical British humour. And some of the puns. Oh, how bad were those puns? So I got to dock, dock a couple of points off of that one. So I'm going to have to take that one down to an 8 out of 10. Animation now. So, animation, animation. It's stop motion animation using the clay mo uh, used famously in Wallace and Gromit, Creature Comforts, and Chicken Run. All done by A. Ardman Studios and B. Nick Park. As far as the animation was concerned, nothing felt out of place as far as the animation was concerned. Again, it's it's something I can't I can't really fault the animation. Again, it's another ten out of ten. So soundtrack next those who know me well know i love me a good soundtrack and the score for early man was done by let's just get soundtrack there we go Tom Ho, oh, Tom Howe, or how do you pronounce it? Ah. That's a, it's easy. So Tom Howe, how do you pronounce it? Tom, Tom Howe, or Tom, yeah. Tom Howe, yeah, we'll just go with Tom Howe. And of course, Harry Gregson Williams, who's done many, many projects. Uh, but Tom Howe, he's known for doing the music for The Great British Bake Off. Uh, let's see, Harry Gregson Williams now, what's he done? He's done, he, he's done The Rock, the, fil the film The Rock with their Hans Zimmer and Nick Glennie Smith. He, or, he did The Borrowers, he did Ants with John Powell, Enemy of the State with Trevor Rabin, the Tigger movie, interestingly, and of course Chicken Run, which I mentioned earlier, again with John Powell, Shrek with John Powell, uh, Shrek 2 by himself. He even did the music for Team America World Police, did the music for the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Flushed Away, Shrek the Third. Prince Caspian, X-Men Origins Wolverine, um, Shrek Forever After, uh, Prometheus, The Martian, what uh, was he done? He did Shrek The Halls, which was a TV special, and then the music for video games. He did the music for every single Metal Gear Solid game minus the first Metal Gear Solid game 
back in the 1998. He did Sons of Liberty, he did Snake Eater, Guns of the Patriots, Ground Zeroes, and The Phantom Pain. And he did the main, he composed the main theme for Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare and Advanced Warfare as well. Now in my books, that is a very impressive resume. Like I say, Tom Howe only known for doing music for the Great British Bake Off, but that is a pretty good combination. And again, it, the soundtrack I really can't fault. But even some, even the song choices they used as well. I'll just go back to the songs that they used for the film. Let's see what they got. Boom, boom. Right, there we go. They had Good Day and Tiger Feet by New Hope Club. Tiger Feet, originally done by the band Mud. Tiger, Tiger Feet. Oh, New Hope Club, it's a new boy band that came on the scene. Huh, that was about that. Uh, the Hope by The Vamps. And The Good... Which... Oh, actually, hold on. Hope wasn't actually featured in the film. Hold up. That could have been a disaster. Anyway, um... Hope by the Vamps was is only featured on the album, the, uh, only featured on the soundtrack, and not in the actual film. And then, of course, I predict a riot by the Kaiser Chiefs. So, yeah, good song choices and a great score all round. So. I'm going to have to give it a 9 out of 10. Because it's not very often I can... It's not very often I say some of the soundtrack felt out of place. But at the end of the day... It doesn't change the fact that it's still a great soundtrack. I mean, there were a couple of... A couple of places here and there. Where... The pace... Felt a bit... Disjointed with the music that was with the uh, a couple of the a couple of scenes in the film but can't pinpoint which ones exactly but at the end of the day it is a great film I say it's a 9 out of 10 for the soundtrack so putting all it together a 7 out of 10 a 10 out of 10 an 8 out of 10 10 out of 10 9 out of 10 so 7 plus 10 ooh. 10 plus 8 plus 10 plus 9 right wait, wait hang on whoops a daisy whoops a daisy okay oh wait hang on And that brings so the author the final score is an eight out of ten. I can't round it up to a nine because like I have mentioned the flaws, but it doesn't take away from the fact it is a great film. And if you're a fan of Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run. This is one I would definitely recommend you go and see, because instead of my seal of approval that I used to have, I'm going to give it the Angel of Moroni as my seal of approval. And if I wouldn't recommend it, as in like, absolutely not recommend it, I would give it the Steps to Repentance. To tie, in with me, to tie in with me being a Mormon, I felt it made sense. I felt it made sense. So, for today, Early Man gets my first ever Angel of Moroni seal of approval. 
thank you for the angelic music by the way folks <laughs> so anyway that's that's two for tuesday parts one out of the way and now on to part number two where i talk about the winners of the baftas